Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside with me, Tian Wei. The COVID-19 pandemic poses momentum changes to the global economy and society alike. Alongside the pandemic, the world is undergoing political and climatic changes, making 2021 full of uncertainties. Collaboration across different cultures, governments and countries are more crucial than ever. In today's episode of our series 2021 Geopolitical Hotspots and Security Issues, I talked to Yuan Peng, President of China Institutes of Contemporary International Relations, who shared his analysis on the major issues we might encounter this year and how to cope with them from the Chinese perspective. Take a listen. Big change in their cooperation. For me, I think there are two parts. At least the two sides still are. That's a great achievement. Bilateral relationship is good. Twenty twenty has been a turbulent year. What do you think are some of the major issues that could provide us? with some inspiration about how we face up to the challenges of 2021? Uh, I, I don't see some big change between 2021 to 2020. Continuity should be the, the, the key word of 2021 versus 2020. Because, for example, the COVID-19, still, some country in the second wave, some other countries still endured the first wave. We, we, we don't see any uh, positive outcome in the near future. Some experts told us that uh, maybe last an additional year. And how to live with uh, COVID-19 is not a near-term task. So we do hope that Joe Biden can play a leading role in combating the COVID-19 under WHO, with China, with other countries. Mm -hmm. So COVID-19 per se is not that uh, serious. But if we have uh, good cooperation among major powers, in particular U the United States and China, I think we still have confidence to uh, deter or combat the pandemic. But many say what the pandemic did in the year 2020 is to exacerbate the already existing challenges and in such a way that it is sometimes even beyond the interpretation. Now, should we be optimistic, more optimistic about that, uh, even with the change of one person in the government in the U.S.? Or should we be more realistic, Professor? Uh, I think realistic is the right word to describe the, the pandemic in 2021 because so far, even if we have a vaccine in many countries, but how, how is the effect still yet to prove? And uh, we, we see some variables in the pandemic per se, for example, in Great Britain, in many other countries. And the most important is a political virus. So if a political virus accompanied with uh, the real pandemic virus, it's a real disaster. So in terms of a political virus, I think maybe Joe Biden is much better than Donald Trump's administration. In this regard, we have a, <clears throat> a little bit hope. So how US and China and other countries uh, cooperate will be more decisive factor in de uh, determining the future of uh, 2021. During the time of the change administration, Many from this side, for example, Chinese State Councilor Wang Yi earlier proposed about uh, pandemic prevention control, about climate change, as well as economic recovery as the common ground that the two sides, China and U.S., can work together. Uh, however, will this so-called working together have enough spillover effect to having a better uh, understanding of the other side and probably better will of uh, interacting with one another. It's a still question mark. What do you think, Professor? His first task is uh, combating the COVID-19. If Joe Biden do hope to win the combating COVID-19 task, he bound to find a new way to cooperate with China. This is not for U.S.-China relations. 
this is for his first year political career. In this regard, I think uh, we still think that we have some minimum positive hope in the near future. But uh, because of a uh, domestic political environment is so bad that I doubt Joe Biden has the capability to overcome all those political obstacles shaped by Donald Trump's administration. This is a big test for his political brave and political, you know, uh, tactic. So what is going to be the nature of China-U.S. relations? That has been a debate for some time already. Many suggest that there's going to be containment and continued containment for years, if not decades, coming from the existing power uh, toward a rising power. That's the argument. Professor Yuan, how do you see it from the Chinese perspective? I think uh, the U.S. and China relations has many scenarios in the future. No one can conclude in one final uh, you know, outcome. So today, China has uh, some, some power to shape and to reset the relations. So how to mobilize our domestic factors uh, resources, how to use Chinese right uh, strategy and policy to lead the relations also is a big test. Even if uh, we are entering into a new phase of U.S.-China relations, which is so bad, but both sides has many rational scholars, experts, and uh, political figures. They want a stable U.S. and China relations. Competition per se is not a bad word. Mm -hmm. We need a good competition. In those competitive areas, we need a good competition rather than better competition. In those cooperative areas, how can we seize the opportunity to make the cooperative areas as big as uh, possible? In those very risky areas like South China Sea, Taiwan, sorts of things, how to uh, prevent rent the risk from spiral out of control. So we have uh, many, many lists of the work in the near future. That's why President Xi proposed the new model of a U.S.-China relations. We need to jointly create a new model. This new model is not only good for U.S.-China, but will provide some case for the future international uh, relations. I think uh, we need this kind of a creative thinking, like an uh, older generation uh, person like uh, Henry Kissinger said that uh, we need a co-evolution. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if uh, 97 years old uh, Henry Kissinger has this very creative thinking, why not the new generations still, still living in the old, old thinking, like so-called new Cold War? Because they would argue it's exactly because China has already become such a power that would challenge the United States, and therefore they will go to their last resort, which is, which is to go into a mode of the Cold War, to shape China into that, and, and also have uh, policies and partners as a result of that. Yeah, that will be their argument. This is a very traditional, you know, uh, big power relations thinking. And uh, this is uh, based on GDP, based on uh, national power, sorts of things. But uh, GDP today is not the uh, uh, right standard to judge the big power relations. If no surprise, in 2028, 20, 2030-something, 20, Chinese uh, overall economic, uh, total economic uh, you know, GDP or power will surpass the states as the number one in the world. But so what? So what? How about high tech? How about the military? How about the per capita GDP? How about the condition of people's uh, daily life, sorts of things? So today we need some new standards to judge the uh, relations. How about the g digital? How about the cyber? <coughs> How about uh, deep sea? So, so many new areas. So the both countries need to go beyond the traditional thinking, or find some creative new thinking. This is the only way to drag the relations out of those traps to find a real new model. You've been in your recent speeches and also recent articles talking about the dangers that China is facing, the world is facing. What do you consider as some of the other elements which you haven't touched on yet? I think ideology is a very dangerous area 
because uh, one thing is not is not that uh, certain for Joe Biden's China policy is that the Democratic Party in the states always enjoy to th talking about thinking about ideology as a tool in foreign affairs. For example, Joe Biden said that uh, in the first year when he ca comes into power, he will have a, a global democracy summit sort of things. I think uh, in in 21st century, still use the ideology as a tool to divide the world into two different camps is a wrong way. So if that's the case, I think um, make the the situation even even worse, even more complicated. And other areas, I think, uh, is, uh, is the, the, the so-called US, EU, Japan, the free trade areas. So how, how to find a new way between uh, Western and Eastern countries, how to find a new way between US and China, EU and China, rather than just US, EU, Japan, those developed economies, you will have a new regional you know, arrangements. And the other side is China and the developing countries. So it's the backward of the world trend. It's not a forward looking. So in those areas, I think we, we need to have some uh, early warning sorts of dialogue. Otherwise, the relations will go, go into even worse uh, situation in the future. China is changing so fast, and therefore people who are doing research about China's uh, security and strategies uh, need to have an uh, ever-evolving grip of what's going on in this country and what is going to be its agenda. So how do you look at that as one of those complicated factors in your research and your future? Originally, Chinese observers, when we research international relations, we just research on U.S., Russia, EU, major powers and regional powers. But uh, China, we are just put China outside the box. Mm -hmm. Today, how to put China, Chinese factor, China's factor into the international relations is something new f for us. The biggest variable, biggest uh, you know, factor is the rise of China. Mm -hmm. So without understanding our, ourselves, how can we understand the, the, the world? How this change of China affect the world? And how to think about the response for, from outside the world for Chinese own change? This is a new uh, challenge and a new task for we generation. Because China now, we say that uh, we, we are changing from uh, uh, rich to strong. Stronger China means we need a very comprehensive understanding of ourselves rather than just pursue a strong economically China, but also a more benign and a more attractive you know, Chinese image and the Chinese new stage in the world.